Hey, I'm PH, and welcome to another episode of Good Bible Knowledge with PhD. In this set of videos, I want to answer common questions about the Bible in a fun and creative way, and I hope these videos will be helpful for you in your own spiritual journey in Jesus. Let's get started. Who is Ezra? From the period of 605 to 538 BC, the people of Israel lived in exile in the foreign nation of Babylon. This was God's judgment for generations of rebellion and disobedience. This judgment, however, would not last forever. For even as the walls of Jerusalem fell, God spoke through the prophet Jeremiah, promising that after 70 years, he would bring them back to the promised land. Ezra was a priest who was born during this captivity in Babylon, and his book is an account of the first two returns back to the Promised Land. The first was led by Zerubbabel to rebuild the Temple of the Lord, and the second was led by Ezra himself to rebuild the spiritual condition of the people. In 538 BC, precisely 67 years after the first deportation, Cyrus, the king of the now Persian Empire, made a decree that the people of Israel were free to return to their homeland. And by 535 BC, just as God predicted, the first wave of people returned to Jerusalem intent on rebuilding the temple of the Lord. Under the leadership of Zerubbabel, the people began the construction, and within two years, the temple foundation was completed. The nation celebrated this milestone with cymbals, harps, and trumpets. And the priests led the people in worship, saying, The Lord is good, and His love endures forever. This familiar song of praise proclaimed that God had restored His blessing upon the nation in accordance with His faithful love. As the temple construction continued, opposition arose among the locals living in the land. These pagan worshippers initially offered their assistance, hoping to find ways to sabotage the project. When the Israelites declined, these people wrote a letter to the king of Persia, defaming the Israelites, persuading the king to suspend the work on the temple indefinitely. And the work ceased for almost 20 years until the prophet Haggai rebuked the Israelites. As soon as the work resumed, the opposition petitioned Darius, the king of Persia, by what authority were the Israelites permitted to build? After a thorough search, the original edict of Cyrus was found, and Darius responded with three clear instructions. By royal decree, he forbid any further interference with the completion of the temple. He ordered the opposition to pay for the project and provide animals and grain for the offerings that would be made in the temple. And anyone who resisted the king's edict would be severely punished. The temple was finally completed in 515 BC, and in 457 BC, 81 years after the first return under Zerubbabel, Ezra led a second group to return to the land. And under Ezra's leadership, God brought about a great spiritual revival as the people returned to God in confession and obedience to the Word of God. Why was the building of the temple so important? The temple was the physical representation of the nation's restored relationship with God. As the Israelites carefully followed God's instruction on rebuilding the temple, they demonstrated their determination to honor and obey the word of the Lord. Why did the Israelites decline the help of the surrounding people? Building a temple in a ruined wasteland was hard enough. Why invite direct opposition and persecution? God commissioned the Israelites alone to rebuild the temple as a light to the surrounding pagan people. By refusing assistance, the Israelites displayed their commitment to be a holy people and a light to the nations. God is a faithful God who keeps his promises for a thousand generations, both to judge as well as to redeem. The story of Ezra reminds us that God does exactly what he says he will do at precisely the moment he promises he will do it. 500 years later, in Israel's darkest moment, in the town of Bethlehem, God again would be faithful to bring his hope and light just as he promised through the birth of Jesus, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. Thanks for listening to another episode of Good Bible Knowledge. We'll see you next time.